Things about to get better. 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 Ooh, well, things about to get better. Listen, 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 one more time. Listen. If you can really hear me, look. All my first time guests, listen, champions, make some noise! Woo <laughs> Whew, I can't breathe. Listen, I, I gotta get out this mat. No, God, please, no, no! No! No? No? No! Ah, oh, thank you so much for joining us. This is a place where you can belong, believe, and become. Who I'm Russian. Listen, just settle here. God's really going to bless you in this service. I thank you so much for joining this broadcast and not being a stalker, not just looking at the thing. You know, some people be looking on the outside, but you got to get it inside. Listen, I can't breathe, so I'm hyperventilating. All right? I need Prasa to pray for me. All right, I'll see you. All right, bye. <coughs> somebody in the comments and say I'm glad to see you I'm glad to see you I'm glad to see you and um, matter of fact um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna teach today I'm gonna teach today but um, I want you to tell somebody this say God is setting me up for the next five months tell them say God is gonna do more for me in five then it took the entire year. Tell them, say, God is going to restore to me even what happened to me in 2020. Tell them I'll get it all back in five months. But I came to say, Lord, whatever you want to do in the next five months, I just want you to get glory. I just want you to get glory. It's not going to, I'm telling you, for the next five months, it's not going to look like my mistakes. It's not going to look like my decisions, what, what I did previously. But my decisions right now are about to be, that, hallelujah, it's about to reflect the will of God concerning my life. Y'all looking in the room, but I'm telling you, the next five months is going to look like favor. What the devil has tried to come and sabotage what God has placed and set up for your life. Let me tell you something, the next five months is filled with glory. The next five months is filled with abundance. The next five months is filled with healing. The next five months is filled with wholeness. The next five months is filled with authority. The next five months is filled with growth. The next five months is filled with harvest. The next five months is filled with love. The next five months is better than what you're planning for. You better plan better than what you've been planning for. Cause the next five, yeah, yeah. the next five months is filled with glory. I dare you to put it in the comments. The next five, you God. The next five months, I'm going to see God expanding me. I'm going to see God stretch out. I feel the Lord stretching out in me. Hallelujah. 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 This is not predicated upon who going to push me. No, 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 no. This next five months, I don't need your push. What I need is the answer from God. I just need his word. I just need what he told me. And I'm going to stand planted on his word. Because I know his word is yes and amen. I know that his word is sure. 
So what it is, I'm not waiting to everybody push me. I'm not waiting to everybody get on the bandwagon. I'm just standing on the promises of God. Cause the promises of God are happening now. The promises of God is moving in your life. The promises of God. Matter of fact, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I promise you, if you just give God the first, if you just give God, make God number one. Everything that you look for will be looking for you. Everything, everything, everything. I feel God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you I came to teach. So, uh, get your Bible. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. Hallelujah. Turn it down for me. Hallelujah. Uh, tell somebody, say, we getting ready. Come on, say it out. Come on, say it out. Say, we, we, oh, we're about to get ready. Tell them I'm about to see the harvest. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, that's, see what, what, I, what, I, what I don't understand is we'll go back to getting quiet when the word of the Lord just came forth. Uh, one of the things y'all got to learn um, online, you too, you're going to learn when God give a word, you have to praise God in advance because when you praise God, it accelerates your answer. It accelerates the manifestation of it. So I'm going to tell you again, uh, I, want you to, I want you to look at somebody. I know, I know they, don't, they probably don't have a mask on and if they do, I'm going to say thank y'all for your mask. But look at them and say, I'm, I'm believing God for the next five months. Everything connected to your name is going to look like a blessing. Everything that's connected to your name is going to look like favor. Everything that looked like your name, it's just not going to be open door. It's going to be the right door. It's going to be the right door that's going to, that's going to lead you to the right answer. It's going to lead you to the right manifestation. It's going to lead you to the right love. It's going to lead you to the comeback that you need. It's going to lead you to the place where your life is about to be picked up. I heard an old song say, if he have to reach way down. Jesus will pick you up If you have to reach way down Jesus will pick you up Jesus will pick you up If you have to reach way Way Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God Way down I did that for no Uh, I'm, I'm giving y'all all of that right now because in a few minutes I'm going to be walking like Joel Osteen. All right, Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Hallelujah. Genesis 22 and 10. Genesis 22 and 10 when you have it. Freedom of y'all already know the custom. Uh, even at home, y'all already know the custom. I said, Pastor, you gonna tell me to stand up and I'm at home in the comfort of my own house? Yeah, stand up. We standing up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for everybody. Uh, thank God for, uh, I'm glad to see my baby uh, here today, Angel. Yeah. There are some people come in your life and uh, you say, God bless you when they leave. God bless you. Love you. God bless you. But there are some people say, you, you, you got to say, I'm going to keep on fighting for you. No matter what goes on in your life, I'm going to fight for you. <laughs> okay, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting, Jay, I'm fighting for you. Fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. Abraham, hallelujah. Because sometimes life can come so much that it seems like people saying, you know what, they're going to do the same thing anyway. But you need some people saying, you know what, I understand, but I was once them. You, and, and this is the thing that, that, that bothers me that people forget and they have amnesia of what they used to do. Re remember, remember when, when you, used, you used to sell drugs. You, but God delivered you and nobody can tell that you sold drugs. 
You used to be. You should do a little, a little something. Y'all, I was just about to say, Quinn, if you're looking on, I'm fighting for you. I was just about to say. Lord, blow my mind. Lord, blow my mind. But sometimes life can come, and it seems like the people that you need to stand with you somewhat push you. DJ, I know you love me, so I know you'll do this for me. Come here right quick. Uh, come here right quick. Uh, come here, come here, come here. Just, damn, pick him up. Uh, what I'm going to do, y'all, this is not a, this is, come on, boy. All right, go get that. All right. Uh, you in the chair, bring it. Come here. You in the chair. All right, put it here. This, I, I wasn't planning on um, saying this. Dan, I need you to run up here real quick. Um, I want you to put DJ on top of the chair. Yep. Now, mind you, DJ, you feel comfortable? Huh? Move a little bit. Move. If you notice, what he's standing on is shaky just as much as he is, you know, moving around. DJ, do you feel comfortable jumping? Hold, hold on. Hold, hold on. You, did you hear what he said? He said, I will try. I will try. Um, I'm jumping. I'm already jumping in my message. So I'm all right. Uh, stand right there. We're going to read this. And then I'm going to come back to you, okay? You got me? My G. All right. Verse 10. Abraham stretched forth his hand and took his knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called on him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, this is what he says, here am I. The question right now, I know what I'm saying this and this is not in my notes, but I'm asking you this, how many times have you rejected the call? How many times have he been calling you and you never said, here am I? What we have done is tried to figure out ways to escape. You had, you, you, you had Jonah moments. But don't you know it takes faith to answer? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I barely have notes today. Um, and he said, lay not thou hand upon the lad neither do anything to him for now I know that thou feareth God stretching out their hand uh, stretching out seeing that he that he didn't he, he went with hell himself from his, child, his son 13 13 and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by the by the horns Abraham went and took the uh, he took the ram and offered it up as a burnt sacrifice in front, instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. Everybody say Jehovah Jireh. Tell you, tell you, they said it's not the day to go to sleep, nor day dream. You're gonna have to catch it. Tell, tell somebody next to you if you feel comfortable talking to them. Tell them for the next five months. Come on, talk to them strong. Say for the next five months, it's about to be risky. You can have this seat. DJ, uh, can they put your shoe on? I'm, 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 I'm going to use you in a few minutes. For the next five months, the Lord instructed me. He said, Dion, tell the church that it's going to be extreme faith. 
but it's going to look like first extreme sacrifice. Sometimes extreme sacrifice seem like it is hurtful. It is lonely. No one else is doing it. But it is a sacrifice. And if you can sacrifice, because what he's really doing right now, believe it or not, he's really sacrificing his life. Because the seat that he's standing on, it moves. Right? It moves. So what DJ really is doing, he is really trusting really three things at the moment. He's trusting the people that is around him because we have never dropped it. Then the next thing is he is standing there trusting, hallelujah, the maker of the stool. So what he's saying is, I, because he did not, he did not second guess the instructions that I said. He did not second guess Daniel putting them up there. I said, do you feel comfortable? He said, I'm trying. My question is this, have you stopped trying? Just because it feels uncomfortable, have you stopped trying? Have you gotten to a place you said, look, this is too much. Put me down because I want to be where it's comfortable. It is comfortable to stand here. But the difference, what I'm about to show you is, the more God gives you, the more weight it carries. Daniel, come in right quick. Come in, come in. So, DJ, do you feel comfortable? Falling back in the arms of Daniel. Uh, do you feel comfortable? He keep on saying, I can try. Now, now this is what this is what a lot of y'all do. What he just did is try to get instructions to the next. He tried to tell what he should be trusting what to do. He just tried tried to give Daniel, who is representation of God, he tried to give Daniel instructions on how you're going to catch me. And God is saying, you know what? I'm the one that put you there. So since I put you there, I already know if it gets shaky. If it gets shaky, I already know the situation of being caught. Put it back up. Put it back up. Abraham is in a place that God gives him instructions, Quint, and tell him, I know you have your son and you love him, but what I want you to do, I want you to take your son because I want to see how well you follow instructions. I want to see how well you are attentive to my my way. I want to see how well I got your attention. I want to see how well you are committed to me. I want to see have I just been your savior or your master. There is a difference when he becomes your savior. That's just at the level of being saved. But when he becomes your master, he tells you what to do with no words exchanged. Meaning that I become a prisoner of God. So, so now, so now, he tells him, what I want you to do, I want you to sacrifice your son. Out of that, he never second guessed God. He never second guessed God. I came today to tell you this. For the next five months, kill your second guess. Disable your second guess. Disable your plan B. Because your plan B has become a handicap. Because now you're used to standing on on something that that you know going to always respond all the time. But for the next five months, God is going to tell you to do different things that looks risky. 
It looks risky to do that. It looks risky to start a business and it seems like your, your money is you're behind in your bills. It looks risky to tell God, God, the God to tell you, I'm going to expand you to have three churches when you're still trying to get people to show up to the first one. It's risky, it's risky when you're saying, God, I know what you told me, but I can't see it yet. Um, the only way I see it is when I pray. And the only way I see it is when I get around the people that is assigned to me. And they keep on telling me and encouraging me, hey, don't you give up, don't you quit, don't you quit. St stick in that marriage, stick in that relationship. Keep on working that business. God gonna come through. And it seemed like, God, you put me on a platform. You put me on something that looks unstable. And you put me for everybody to see so if I fall I fall and it looks like God set you up for failure you feel comfortable jumping into my arms jump the reason he jumped once again because um, 2015, he was about this tall. And I put him on an organ. And I said, DJ, at first I put man. I put man, and I said, man, jump off the organ. Man is way bigger. <laughs> He's way taller than what DJ is now. And he was looking at me, he was like, no, I'm not jumping. I said, you don't trust me? He said, yeah, I trust you. I said, you know you don't trust me because if you trusted me, you would just jump into my arms. And then I asked him the question, have I dropped you before? No? Hallelujah. No, you ain't. Hallelujah. I feel God now. Uh, have I ever dropped you before? Kel, I think you was there that day uh, when I told you. Uh, and then DJ, we put DJ on top of the organ. And I said, DJ, jump. He said, okay and took a leap. Not only did he just go like this, he put a little jump in it because the jump was saying, I'm gonna enjoy this leap. I'm gonna enjoy this risk. I'm going to enjoy it. So if, you, if you're going to do it, you might as well enjoy it. You might as well say, God, since I'm going, I'm going and I'm going all the way. I'm giving you all of my body. I'm giving you my, my mind. I'm giving you my career. I'm giving you my ministry. The only thing I got less is the risk. I've given everything to everything else. And everything dropped me. The only thing I got now is just to trust me. tells him sacrifice your son wait a minute I love him but the number one thing I have to disable my plan B whatever plan B you had for the next five months you had a masata you had a plan B boo you had a plan B career decision. You had a plan B on what you were going to do about God. You had a plan B on what you was going to do about your ministry. You had a plan B about your health. You had a plan B. But I came today to tell you, you got to disable, hallelujah. You got to disable your plan B because your plan B was not authorized by God. God didn't tell you to do that. He just gave you some instructions. And I love God with the instructions. That's all he gives him. The task is, you followed me before. You followed me before. What I need you to do is follow me again. Remember, he told him, take where you are, everything that you're familiar with, everything that brings you comfort, everything that makes you feel safe, leave it, abandon it. And then what I want you to do is go to a place that I will show you. Wait a minute, you didn't even tell me the instructions. You didn't even, I mean, you, you gave me the instructions, but you didn't even tell me where I'm about to land. So again, the Lord tells him, God tells him, I want you to sacrifice your son. JP, think about this. You have a son and the Lord tells you to kill him. 
the thing that you love the most, he tell you, kill it. That attitude that you love the most, he tell you, kill it. That addiction that you have, he tells you to kill it. The habit that it seems like it won't leave you, he tells you to. It's like the devil keep on bringing abundance. You feel like you come out and the Lord start lifting your life and then it falls again. And it seems like you start lifting again and then it falls again. And it seems like it goes up again and then it falls again. I came today to tell you, I just want to prophesy to you today that this time you're not going to fall. This time you're not going to relapse. This time you're not going to go back. This time you're not going to shriek back. This time you're going to stick with it. This time God got you. This time he just want you to this that's all he wants you to do it says jump everybody say it's, it's about to be risky it's about to be risky when the lord tell you uh he told you what you he said this is what i'm gonna do for you y'all i'm gonna tell you this um it's, it's uncomfortable to me because some of the stuff that i like and some of the things that i'm comfortable with the lord telling me he said Dion, if you're gonna get what i want you to get i need you to abandon some of those things i need you to get rid of some of those things um some of the different desires that i have he told me he said look what you're trying to do is not in my will i need you to get according to my will because everything about my life for the next few months is about to be risky. Daniel, he tell you, kill your son. And if you see in scripture, he never comes and says, no, I ain't doing that. He prepared his son. Get yourself ready, son. We're about to go on a trip. We're gonna take, we're gonna take the donkey and the servant with us, and we're gonna keep on walking. But I need you to get these tools together. I need you to get these tools together because we're about to go make a sacrifice. And the son is looking like, you know, I'm gonna do what you say. Isaac is looking what um hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I just got a revelation. Some I'm sorry. Um, he tells him, pick it up. Isaac is very aware of sacrifices and he's looking around like I got the stuff for the sacrifice but where is the sacrifice? Pen. Put the pen book, bookmark. DJ's here. DJ's gotten a little, he's got a little taller, got a little more weight on him than before. Well, you know I love you. I love you, ooh. Right? right? So, but DJ know, if anything, every time he'll ever, I've ever put him in a position, I remember DJ, after service, DJ used to say, pick my up. What he wanted me to do is throw him in the air so he can say, woo, in the air, then I catch him. Have I ever dropped you? What it is now is his memory is on you have never failed me so i trust you every time <laughs> i'm preaching better than anything today i feel god oh uh, dj saying look you have never dropped me and i know you're not going to drop me so 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 the testimony is your resume is good with me so since you told me to go and you led me to where I need to be and I have kids now, um, I'm going to trust you again with something that I really love, but I'm going to trust you. Come on, DJ. I'm, we're going to change. We're going to change roles. All right. Keneal. Keneal. DJ, how are you? I'm uh, eight, Keneal is nine, right? Keneal has a, a better, I ain't gonna say better, but he has a more, um, the, cause the more you grow, the more the assignment, he has more responsibility, let's say that. More responsibility lays, lies on him. You feel comfortable? Huh? You, huh? Not really? Want me, want me to stop pulling you? You say, yes, please. Why? You don't trust me? 
You trust me? Do you really? But you want me to stop. Why do you want me to stop? Huh? Huh? Why you want me to stop? It's scary. See, that's what's been going on. Hey, girl. A lot of situations that, you, that you've been in, you've been blaming it on the devil. And God said, no, it's not the devil. I know it's scaring the life out of you. Daniel, move back. Trust me. It's been scaring the life out of you. But guess what? God put you in this situation. And what he's trying to do is say, can I test you to see where your heart lies? You still trust me? You sure? You sure? Huh? You still trust me? He still trusts me. It's shaking. He's, un honestly, he is now in a place of trembling. But he's about to go to a place of trusting. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, have you been in a place of trembling? Tell them, but you're about to go to a place of trusting. Why are you crying? Huh? You scared? He's scared. He's scared. He is scared. But he forgot who hands he's in. He's scared, Sherman. I love you. Uh, he's scared to be on this stool because you don't trust the stool, but he trusts me. And God said, There's some situations you don't trust it, but you trust the one that got his hands on you. He's still in a position. Now he's become emotional because. He said, I want to trust you, Pastor, with all of my heart. But I'm really unsure about this. And God wants me to tell you for the next five months. You ready? It's about to be risky. Y'all scared? Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Come here. Now, some of you all, you would have ran and found your mama. But what he did, he turned around and put his hands up, saying, you know what? I still trust you. No matter what's going on, I still trust God. The process seems strange. The process seems unstable. It seems unstable. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to still trust God. Father, let the anointing of God come on in. Come on, the close of time. Now fill it with the Holy Ghost today. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray with me. Fill it with the Holy Ghost because he trusts in you. The thing is, Shannon, I don't know if you got scared when I pushed him. He said a little bit. But the thing is, why get scared? When I assign Daniel, let me say this because y'all looking at me. I assigned the safety. I assigned you to be picked up. I assigned because of what the thing is. I trust his strength. Some of you, are, you don't trust God. You don't trust what God is about to thrust you in. You don't trust him. But I'm going to tell you this. You better go to a place. You said, God, no matter what's going on, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you everything because if you put me here I know you're going to sustain me if you put me here I know you're not going to drop me if you put me here if he put me here and some of you all You've been blaming it on the devil. And you've been saying the devil trying to kill me. And the devil, I pine you devil. And God said, know what it is. I'm testing what's in you. Because I'm about to elevate you. Matter of fact, I'm testing what's in you. Because I want you to have a testimony that Jehovah Jireh came. I want to change your perspective on where you are. Abraham went to a mountain. But God said, I want to change it from you looking at it. Being a mountain to a pavilion. Provision.
think about this. The confidence is in Abraham and is in his son because Abraham tells the one that came with him, you stay here. Me and the lad is about to go worship. We'll be back. Wait a minute, that ain't what God told you. God told you to take your son and kill him. You're about to have a sacrifice so that your son, but I believe it's in Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm gonna trust you all the way when I, until I get there. Cause I understand if you, you ain't never let me down, I know you're not gonna let me down now. You changing my name cause you understand who I am. So I'm gonna keep on trusting you. Cause my assignment is not like Lot's. And that's the issue that some of you all, you've gotten so, you've gotten so entangled with Lot that you've been, you've been so, you've been so entangled with Lot that you become, um, you begin entangled with Lot's decisions and Lot's, and Lot's uh, attitude and Lot's uh, mindset. No, I don't need a Lot. I need a Sarah. I need somebody in my life to say, you know what? We still gonna produce. We still gonna come through. We still coming out of this. We still got something to give. tells his son Daniel come on bring this with you uh, go get that that uh that stand right there pick it up put it on your shoulder put it on your shoulder now walk around the stage he's taking wood go all the way around all the way around I want all the way around yeah all the way around he's telling him told it and he's walking, and if I can use my Holy Ghost imagination, Isaac said, I know I'm following my daddy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Stuff fall apart. Just keep on walking. See, y'all missed that. Just in case something fall apart, you just keep on walking. Don't turn around and look, because what it is, they're trying to get you to look back. Remember what happened when you look back? <laughs> so, so it's in the place. His son is walking like, Daddy, I'm so used to this stuff, but where in the world is the sacrifice? Not understanding that he is. The sacrifice is coming. Then the Bible says, he, he tell him, now lay here. Just as a symbolic sign, I'm putting, I'm putting the wood on him, cause now we're getting ready to burn him. Do you imagine? Just imagine this. Isaac saying, "Oh, I get it now. I was told to sacrifice the whole time. I get it." But I love my daddy so much. I'll be that because God has always came through for my daddy. And, I don't, and I'm not here to cause my daddy to be embarrassed. So what it is, I trust my daddy so much that I'm going to lay here and get ready for him to do whatever he's going to do. Because I understand my daddy has always come through. And I understand if God told my daddy to do this concerning me, I know that if the trouble come, he have always made a way for me to make a way for me to escape some of you, you you're so intimidated because the trouble came and God said when the trouble came so did the escape the escape came to get you out of what you're in you gotta trust the process y'all I'm overjoyed because our family from Baton Rouge is here with us they drove all the way here to be with us in service y'all my mind is blown <laughs> because they joined online Yes. We have never met them, and today we see Sherman and Ashley. Come on, that's right. That's right. Tell us, tell that's us church, how, how what, doing? what made what made y'all come? How did y'all get connected to us? How did that work? Well, 
for quite some time I had been going through some things. And my wife saw y'all live mm -hmm. and, you know, brought it to my attention. And not gonna lie, I was in the bathroom, you know, watching the live and mm -hmm. I felt your anointing. Wow. You know, God drew me near to you. Wow. For a long time, you know, I didn't, I was scared to go to church. I didn't want to be misled by false prophets. You know, but I felt you on that. I told my wife, I said, I gotta meet him. I gotta be based some way, some kind of how, we gotta get to that. And God presented the perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when I found out that I had, I, I was coming to see you, I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Couldn't sleep, I, could, I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do nothing but get here to meet you. Wow, wow. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say this, uh, cause Ashley's shy, so yeah. she ain't gonna say too much. <laughs> but when you, sometimes when you don't feel like you're, you're hitting the mark or you feel like you know the assignment is not working mm -hmm. god will always send you someone to encourage you and um, what i'm blessed to say is god the assignment of god for us the freedom life center just not me and my wife but the assignment for our lives is so much broader than what we even see and Louisiana is here today. That's right. We're I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Y'all got to get some of this Freedom Life Center juice. Yeah. Get some of this Freedom Life Center That's experience. Right. God is doing something amazing. Where the anointing is at. <laughs> yeah, Freedom Life Center. Y'all got to come check it out. God bless. Wow, wow, wow. What a testimony of people driving 10 hours. A beautiful couple driving 10 hours just to be in service. I blow my mind. And you said, Pastor, while you was preaching, I was like, you know what? That's my pastor. I heard my pastor when uh, you was preaching. Guess what? We would love to uh, help you and lead you no matter where you're from. We have people that have, been, that have joined our church, that have been online, that has been with us through the pandemic, and has joined this church from all across the country. And guess what? You can too. So I would love to help you navigate you in the journey of becoming what God wants you to become. And so if you would like to do that, that's the information below that you can get connected to that. And we're just going to keep on bringing you content. And we're going to keep on being creative because we want to let the world know that God is still alive and he still is talking to us. One of the things I want to share this before we get off. One of the things that's on my heart is that we are in a moment. We're in a moment that people are looking for answers. There are people with real problems and they have in real life situations, but they need a real God to give them a real answer. And I just believe that you can get that answer right now by receiving Jesus. Yeah, you're receiving Jesus right now. No matter what you, because I'm not going to assume that everybody on this live just look because you came from a church. No, some people say, I just stumbled across and I've seen you all doing this. I'm telling you something. God is going to heal your body. God is going to save you. God is going to redeem you. God is going to bring restoration to your home. I just believe right now, whatever you have, whatever you, whatever you face, whatever you have um, gone through, God is here to meet your every need. And it starts by receiving Jesus. Just that simple. Just receiving Jesus, getting in place. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I have flaws. I know, but I really want you. I really want you. I have flaws, but I really want him. So let's do this together as a corporate team. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I repent of my sins. I turn the opposite way. Devil, get out of my life. I evict you out now. You have no more residence in my life. Lord Jesus, live in me, make me new. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are my Lord and I receive you now as my Savior in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, you received, you're saved. I want you to look on the look at the bottom of the screen. There's some information because we want to help you through your journey. It's not over. We want to help you navigate. We want to help you go and blossom in the things of God. Oh, yes, we do. And, and before we get off, I want to challenge everyone that is looking. I would love for you to sow a seed tonight. If you can, sow a $25 seed. Why? I just believe the Bible says what good things you may happen for another, the same shall you receive of the Lord. 
I do believe tonight there are some people looking at me saying, Pastor, I'm, I'm preparing to do something. I'm preparing to write a book. I'm preparing to launch a business. I'm preparing to do a ministry. And what I need to do is put seed in the ground because a seed will produce out of its own kind. Don't allow the devil to talk you out. One of the things I know, the devil would never tell you, tell you to sow. He will always try to talk you out of it. Tonight, you said, I, I feel pulled. I feel pulled. I feel led to do more. Well, hear the voice of God. The Bible says this. He'll multiply the seed song. So you have to put it in the ground so you can see multiplication hit your life. Let me say this confession over you, and then we're going to slide out of here. I want you to say this with me. Say, debt has disappeared. Lack has left. Poverty has fleed. Wealth is accumulating. My money is growing. Favor is multiplied. Wealth and riches are in my house. I'll never be broke another day in my life. I am an economy changer. I change my world with my resources. Wealth is assigned to me. Wealth is my responsibility and wealth is my reality. I receive now in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm so glad because you're looking at the, the, the screen. I understand and this. All the information is there. I'm Pastor Dion Jefferson of this amazing church that I get a chance to serve called Freedom Life Center. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week because we're only going higher from this. Let's get ready to go. We love you.